Hello everybody, this is a loyal gamer giving you a new uh, playlist of tutorials that all of you guys can learn from. Uh, this is a tutorial based on uh, beginners who are interested in let's playing or people who are interested in video editing in general and want to learn uh, as fast as possible, I guess. Uh, I'm going to make a few videos. Uh, I already made a couple uh, explaining video editing terminology and basically all the stuff that I do to make my videos and uh, I really hope that th this uh, helps you guys out uh, for those of you who've been PMing me and asking me how I do my videos uh, basically I do have tutorial videos that I've made like in the past but they're very outdated and they don't reflect my current method that I use so I figured I'd go ahead and uh, make a new series uh, for anybody who's interested I use Windows 7 uh, Ultimate and um, I run uh, an AMD quad core computer that I built myself and uh, I have three internal hard drives uh, this is actually very important because the I have the C disk which I really need to reformat um, this drive right here, uh, this is actually a one terabyte drive that I put inside of my computer and I record to this drive. Uh, whenever you do video editing of any kind, it is very important not to record video to your boot disk as if you basically delete those videos after you're done editing them, uh, they're going to fragment your drive to all hell. So uh, it is better to record straight to another internal drive to basically give your uh, boot disk slack. Uh, backup drive for the boot disk, that's my C backup. And this is actually an emulator that I mounted using Magic ISO. It's not an emulator, it's, uh, it's Panzer Dragoon Saga. And uh, I have to use a separate program in order to mount disks into the program in order for SSF to recognize. And SSF is a Sega Saturn emulator. Uh, this will not be a tutorial for any emulators. Uh, you can go find those uh, on different videos or websites. Uh, this is basically the recording process, not how to set up an emulator. So this video in particular will just be about basic uh, hardware stuff and software stuff. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to run through recording a episode of Spyro the Dragon or Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage and uh, it's very simple. Uh, whoops, uh, you got to see my head massage video there that I have but uh, my process is very simple. Anybody can do it on just about any computer. And if I decide to choose a game to LP, I usually try to get a game that I can emulate. And if I can't emulate it, then the second best thing that I could do is uh, try to hook it up on my Blackmagic Intensity Pro or uh, my last resort method, which is to use my HD PVR, which I think is acting up, to be honest, but I'm not sure. I haven't used it in a very long time. So anyway... Uh, Let's just say that you have an emulator ready, you have it all configured to your liking, and you just go ahead and click. And this is what EPSXE looks like. I have version 1.7.0, and I have it configured uh, to run Spyro 2 perfectly, uh, with as little glitches as possible. And um, usually at this point in time, I would go ahead and uh, connect a USB controller so it would pretty much mimic uh, playing a PlayStation on my PC and uh, at this point I would also run uh, Fraps. I run a version of Fraps with this and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to record a video within recording a video <laughs> uh, I hope it doesn't create any problems but um, I should be able just to give you guys an example. Uh, actually, yeah, it is going to be a problem because uh, F9 is used to both uh, stop, start and stop 
uh, both Camtasia and Fraps. So uh, for now, we'll just leave Fraps open. I will not use it. Uh, but Fraps is extremely easy to run. All you have to do is just press F9 to record and uh, press F9 again to stop recording. That's all it does. Uh, with Fraps, actually, let's p pull it in here for a minute. My name is not Cesar Arcana, by the way. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, uh, we're going over here to movies. Uh, Camtasia recordings. Notice how it says E, all right? Now, if you look over here, uh, that E is my media drive. That is where all of my uh, stuff goes to uh, basically uh, be put in... Oh, what file do I use? WMV? Yeah, something like that. All my files... No, AVIs. I use AVIs for recording. Not WMVs, my bad. Uh, I always send it to compressed AVI. That's probably the best raw... Uh, video data that is uncompressed that you can get on a Windows system is an AVI. Uh, for Apple computers, your default uh, uncompressed codec will probably be QuickTime or something like that. Something that's Apple, uh, Apple related product. Uh, for Windows, uh, it's either going to be WMV or AVI uh, that you're going to want to use. And uh, with the recording, it's super simple. Uh, all you gotta do is just uh, do record Win7 sound. And this can only be done if you have stereo mix or something that's like that. If not, then you can get virtual audio cables, which is a pretty decent, yet a little bit more complicated substitute for stereo mix. But stereo mix is great for uh, sound cards if you have it on them. Make sure you can enable stereo mix audio by going over here to playback devices. And as you can see, this is all my crazy stuff here. Uh, you should be able to see stereo mix in the recording tab. If you don't have it, then make sure you have show disabled devices checked. I had to do that for my sound card. And sure enough, stereo mix popped up. And Stereo Mix is great because it's basically a have what you hear option, which basically enables you to record your um, microphone in tandem with software. Uh, this is especially good for high quality USB mics like the one I'm using right now. I'm using a blue snowball with a pop filter on it. And um, basically, it's basically good for uh, hardware like that. Uh, I usually don't use the 3.5 millimeter jacks anymore for uh, <laughs> for microphones because it's just not. I just have problems with it for some reason. That's why I have my front mic not plugged in. I just don't really use it anymore. Um, and my speakers are my default for playback. So make sure you have those enabled and. Running EPSC, is, ugh, running EPSXE is very simple. All you have to do is just click File and Run CD-ROM. And you'll notice that up on the left-hand corner, you have uh, double-digit uh, yellow numbers that are going up and down real fast, essentially. And... Uh, there you go. It normalizes at 30 frames per second. And this is HD video. And that's basically it. This is 720p video right here, uh, as you can see. So we're just going to go ahead, make sure you click on this, and just press escape just to exit out of there. Uh, after you've recorded uh, your Fraps movie, it will go straight to where your destination folder is, which is Camtasia Recordings, all right? So you can exit out of here, exit out of EPSXE, which totally bonked my entire uh, screen there. And uh, let's see here. Here is all of my stuff right here. So 
E Media. And uh, let's go over to Camtasia Recordings. And I have a final project here. I don't know what that is. I think that's probably for one of my online courses that I did a lot, while back. But as you can see, here are all my uh, videos labeled. That I uh, manually labeled all of them myself in numerical order. Our R stands for Ripto's Rage. And these are all 720p resolution videos. Uh, that's uncompressed with fraps. And let's play one of them back. <clears throat> Yeah, this is a pretty annoying level. Uh-oh. There we go. Alright. So, basically what Fraps does, and it's a little annoying, not really, but what Fraps does is that Fraps records in segments rather than recording one long big file. And they do this for a couple reasons, but the main reason is to make sure that uh, the audio and video and your commentary, if you're recording through Fraps, are going to be in sync with one another. Uh, so instead of doing anything else that would prevent uh, desync, they basically chop the video up into uh, one minute to two minute segments that you have to simply slap together uh, when you edit it in the final product. But um, all you have to do is just smash some of these together until you end your episode, and then you'll have your episode. You just have to put all these together, and it's really not that hard. Uh, so if you were planning on making like a long play or something, and you really didn't intend to edit any of your videos, you're going to have a hard time with fraps because you pretty much need to edit your video in order to utilize uh, your product through fraps because they all have to be put together in order to make one actual video. But the good part about Fraps is that Fraps always records uncompressed, so you're gonna get the highest quality possible. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much the best uh, software to record with, in my opinion, for emulators that are compatible with it. And that's pretty much my number one way of recording any video. It's just the easiest to do, it's the fastest to do, and it, it's, you know, it's very simple and it's really fast to edit. It's not going to take like an hour like some of my other games did when recording off of consoles, but uh, all around the Fraps plus emulator method is probably the number one method I would recommend to anybody just as long as you have an internal drive that is being recorded onto separate from your boot disk because since these videos are uncompressed fraps is going to uh, make these video sizes very large so keep that in mind all right so we're gonna exit explore out and that's pretty much it once you have your video files you're all ready to edit and uh, I have a few more videos that I made uh, that are going to be about video editing terminology. And that should get you started for your very basic editing tutorials. So this is A Loyal Gamer signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.